Hello everyone and welcome to episode number two of my F1 2021 uh, breaking point series. I'll leave a link to the first episode uh, in the description and uh, we'll get straight into it. The recent series of incidents with his teammate Kasper Ackerman, both on and off the track, have marred the start of Aidan Jackson's rookie F1 season. With the French Grand Prix coming up, Jackson is keen to find the form that brought him so much success in F2. It's a great day for racing here at Le Castellet, and the drivers are making their final preparations on the grid. Let's hope for a thrilling contest then, here at the French Grand Prix. Mastering a lap of Paul Ricard means getting to know 15 corners, 6 left and 9 right, for an overall lap distance of 3.6 miles. The two halves of the long Mistral Strait are separated by a heavy braking zone into a potential overtaking hotspot at the Chicane Noor. And watch out for the drivers running onto the distinctive coloured stripes, which are low in grip and highly abrasive. Here we are then at the circuit, Paul Ricard in France, the 10th race of the 2020 Formula One season. And the standings are starting to take some kind of shape, Ant. Yeah, exactly. You've got your big three jostling for position at the top, so no surprises there. A little less predictable in the midfield, though you could make an argument for Haas underperforming somewhat. The two Haas drivers denying each other points, perhaps. Well, it's all to race for and a lot of season left ahead of us. So let's see how it all pans out. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Bottas, Leclerc, Sergio Perez and Ricardo, Norris, Vettel, Sainz and Lance Stroll, Ocon, Ackerman, Devon Butler and Albon, Russell, Kvyat, Antonio Giovinazzi and Aidan Jackson. Gasly and Kimi Raikkonen finishes off the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. OK, we've not quite had the start of the season we'd hoped for, but we've got a chance to make up some ground today. Try to keep your nose clean and show us what you've got. Good luck, Aiden. All right, so here we are on the grid then for the French Grand Prix. Uh, as for strategy, simple one stop. It's a 25% race. And uh, we've got some nice new weather icons that are uh, in colour now, so that's nice to see. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, one stop, softs to mediums, no uh, real variation there, so let's just get into it. All five lights are on, and it's lights out, and away we go for our first F1 race uh, in uh, this game, our first F1 start, uh, was what I'm trying to say here, as we're trying to get to the inside, no space there, and now we're losing positions as we head down towards the first corner, back up the inside though, and trying to squeeze through on the inside of the Williams car there, that is George Russell, so don't have to worry about him uh, yeeting us out of the race, but now to the inside of George, not going to get there though, as he's defending quite harshly, as we go around the outside though, and we'll make the move on him uh, relatively uh, easily in the end, uh, as he was quite slow through there, but uh, now uh, sitting on the back of uh, the other Williams of Devon Butler. This is the guy we've got to watch out for as we uh, try to go around the outside off circuit there and uh, having to uh, rejoin. And uh, I was uh, going to give the spot back, but he's way back there now, so uh, we're not going to bother uh, with that. And uh, Butler can simply stay behind us. Uh, continuing on though, uh, already on the back of uh, one of the Red Bull cars, Alexander Albon, uh, not doing so well uh, in this one and uh, not even running in the top 10 at the moment. So disaster for uh, Alexander Albon as we uh, try and close up to the back of uh, the uh, tyre Brit driver. And uh, let's see if we can close in here uh, through this long right hander. Where are we going to go to try and overtake him as we have a look uh, inside or outside? What will it be? Uh, we're going to sit behind for now. And uh, we actually gave a uh, bit of a nudge there uh, the, into the back of the Red Bull. Uh, but uh, once again, thankfully, uh, damage seems to be uh, very minimal uh, in this. Uh, so uh, it's not really a huge concern for us as we uh, make the move through the final corner and uh, close up uh, now to uh, our teammates. So uh, here we go then, uh, making the move on our teammates uh, pretty easily there around the outside and uh, get ahead of Ackerman. 
So uh, now we catch up to Esteban Ocon and uh, we're going to make the move up the inside of him. You'll notice he has a, a target on his name because we uh, need to beat the Renaults and the Clarens in this race. Okay, that is the target uh, that we have been set. So Esteban Ocon uh, is the first of those. Uh, next, car, next car up ahead is Lance Stroll in the racing point. Let's see if we can get a good exit here. Not really. And uh, we'll have to stay behind for a bit longer. So we move on then and uh, we do catch up to Lance Stroll just two corners later we get past him uh, nice and easy next up is Sebastian Vessel uh, in the Ferrari let's see if we can close up uh, to the back of uh, the uh, German uh, on the exit of this uh, flat out uh, left hand and we should get a decent run here we do and we get past Sebastian Vettel uh, in a straight line with the DRS assistance. Next up is Daniel Ricciardo, uh, the next target car, and we're going to go for a big old dive up the inside and uh, send it uh, on Daniel Ricciardo himself and uh, make that move stick. And uh, next up, the two McLarens uh, of Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris. We're going to wait until the uh, final corner to try and make a move on Carlos Sainz up the inside, and we're just about squeezing the gap between him and Lando Norris looking back uh, now from the Brit and uh, you can see uh, he has DRS assistance but in the slipstream uh, we get the uh, better run as he defends all the way to the inside we'll sweep around the outside and uh, make the move on Lando and Norris as there's a side by side battle ahead of us uh, between Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc uh, Leclerc winning out there ahead of the racing point driver and uh, we'll wait uh, just for a moment behind those two as we try and maybe get around the outside of Sergio Perez and we get the move done there and uh, next up is Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari and uh, that might be the ceiling of uh, where we can climb to in this race we'll have to see but uh, I don't imagine we'll have the pace of the Mercs and Red Bulls uh, at the front of the field but you never know as we go to the inside Leclerc defends we go to the outside on the Ferrari and uh, we should be able to make the move uh, sweep around and uh, we can uh, even take the apex there so uh, now uh, up into fourth position and uh, let's see what we can do from here okay gap ahead is 3.6 seconds actually we're not that far behind Valtteri Bottas so uh, you never know it could be on but uh, before we uh, catch up to uh, the uh, race leaders it is time to make a pit stop in this race so uh, in we come for our medium compound tires we'll get an undercut on those ahead so that could work out for us as well as uh, we uh, leave a big old pile of smoke uh, in the pit bay there and uh, go uh, racing once again and uh, get back out onto the circuit. So as we continue on then uh, you can see that uh, we are going to take the lead uh, after that undercut and uh, that was it. That was all the excitement uh, for the race after that we were uh, just pulling away so uh, somewhat uh, un unbelievably uh, we are going to uh, have a little celebration here because we have the time for it and uh, that is uh, going to do it we're going to uh, head towards the finish line and we are going to win the French Grand Prix fantastic drive just fantastic you deserve that race win A great race then, and a fantastic victory here at Paul Ricard. Business as usual for the big three, but a bit of a reshuffle in the midfield here in France. That's certainly much better from Haas. Frankly, they should be in the mix more often. On a good day, they're as good as anyone in that midfield pack. And they've certainly proved it today. Today was another great race and an even greater victory for Haas. Here they come now to step out onto the top of the podium. They'll be incredibly happy with today's result. Great work out there today. Let's have your thoughts. Aidan, congratulations, you got on the podium. That's a fantastic result for both you and the team. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's a team effort. I'm just the one behind the wheel. It was an amazing result today, and I think everyone deserves it. I'm just pleased I could bring it home for them. Well, it's such a great result, especially since it's your first season in Formula One. Would you say you found your feet now since the jump to F1? I think there's always going to be hurdles. And look, you never know what's around the corner. Change is always difficult, but 
I think I'm settling in. The team seems happy at least. So there's no current tensions within the team? We've all seen that you and Casper have locked horns so far this season. Is that something that's now behind you? Well, that's up to Casper. Maybe he thinks I'm yet to prove myself. Who knows? Hopefully today's gone some way to doing that. If there is still a problem between us, it's not from me. Appreciate your time. Jackson put in a solid performer to the French Grand Prix to firmly cement Haas as a contender in the crowded middle pack of the F1 grid, much to the delight of the team's management and fans. Ryan. Hayden, just so you know, there's a full team meeting in 20 minutes. No worries. We just want to review our strategy while the race is still fresh in our minds. Right, OK. I'll see you there. Hey, listen, while you're on, I just wanted to say that was some solid driving out there today. I'm impressed. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Put it this way. It's been noticed. Well done, kid. I'll see you in the meeting. Hey, Ma. Hello, love. Just calling to say well done, as usual. You okay? Thanks, Mum. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Real good. I think I delivered today. I thought so. And I think the neighbours probably did too. <laughs> I couldn't stop shouting. <laughs> oh, not again. I'm so proud of you, Aiden. Hey, it's Silverstone soon. So does that mean you'll be home for a few days? Probably. I'll try and get over for a day or two, either side of race weekend. You know, Silverstone was always your dad's favourite track. I know. You're still coming to the race, right? Do you really think I'd miss out on the VIP treatment? Of course I'm coming. I just wish it wasn't on my own, you know? Yeah, I know, but I'll be there. And I can't wait to see you. Me too. Anyway, I won't keep you. I imagine you want to go and celebrate. Well done again. Love you. Love you too, Mum. Speak soon. No. <laughs> uh, I said it in the first episode, but I love the phone calls. It's just... I don't know. Adds, like, a bit of... extra... depth, I suppose, to uh, the characters. A bit of backstory as well. But, uh, anyway. Um... Yeah, so we've got Silverstone coming up next, the home race for Aiden Jackson, so uh, I can hardly wait to see uh, what happens uh, at uh, at that one. Let's hope uh, things go smoothly uh, for, for our uh, protagonist. With Haas continuing to show signs of improvement, the F1 world turns a size to Silverstone, a real test for rookie Aiden Jackson as he returns home with hopes of impressing the home crowd and earning their support at the historic circuit. Hello? Hello, mate. Who is this? Oh, come on, keep up. It's Devon. Butler. The very same. How did you get this number? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Listen, listen. I just wanted to pass on a bit of friendly advice. Oh. Now, it's always tricky racing on your home track. The pressure, all the fans watching, it's a nightmare. Right, yeah, I imagine it is. But if you keep your cool, you stay focused, you will get through it, okay? Just, just imagine it's a different circuit on the other side of the planet. Then, when your race does fall apart, it'll be a lot easier to deal with. Yeah, uh, great advice. I knew you'd think so. Anyway, Good luck out there today. Just just try and make it to the end, eh? <laughs> Ta-ta! Uh, yeah, good luck to you too. I'll see you later. <laughs> oh, Devon. Devon, 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 Devon. What, 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 what is this game? I, I, I love Devon Butler, but I hate Le uh, Devon. Uh, that's a tongue twister. I love Devon Butler, but I hate Devon Butler. <laughs> uh... Yes, uh, definitely, uh, definitely a character. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, get get into uh, the the race. 
capitalising on a fantastic Q3, Aiden Jackson is enjoying one of his finest career performances when a front right puncture threatens to ruin his chances of a top 5 finish. With friends and family in the stands and the crowd behind him, Jackson sets his sights on salvaging what he can from the race. Tires are gone. Copy Aiden, box box. Copy. Let's just minimize the damage. Okay, the gap behind is 5.3 seconds. All right then, uh, so here we go, a punctured right front tire and uh, we need to try and uh, get this thing into the pits lane uh, as quickly as we possibly can. So uh, thankfully, ho well, hopefully that shouldn't be too difficult. Trying to brake nice and early so we're gonna speed into the pit lane. Very easy to do when you have a punctured tire. But uh, anyway, we uh, managed to uh, avoid that uh, issue and uh, now uh, run through the pit lane very, very slowly. Uh, it's gotta be said. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can see the tire just flailing and flapping around all over the place as we uh, slowly crawl along the pit lane uh, uh, before we get this uh, tyre fixed up. Anyway, but uh, finally new tyres on and uh, we can uh, chase down uh, the rest of the pack uh, by the end of the race hopefully as we uh, exit uh, pit lane uh, once again. We're just losing so many positions here it's really kind of uh, uh, frustrating but uh, anyway target updated uh, we need to uh, try and salvage some points in this race, so uh, let's see uh, what we can do. Still time left to push for the points here, Aiden. Copy. So our first target is Kimi Raikkonen, and we make the move on him, going into Brooklyn's up the inside, and uh, that elevates us up and into 16th position. Next up is uh, Daniel Ricciardo and George Russell uh, fighting it out round the outside of the Renault and or immediately on the back of the Williams as we try and sit in the slipstream of George Russell. DRS open for us and not for George and that should make overtaking him reasonably easy as we head down towards Brooklyn's once again along the Wellington Strait and uh, we make the move on him and uh, find ourselves up and into 14th position. Next up uh, we have our teammate Kasper Ackerman uh, who is uh, fighting away uh, with Sebastian Vettel around the outside of Ackerman and he leaves us some space. I don't know why I keep saying Ackerman but anyway uh, we get the move done on him and uh, now chasing down uh, our uh, power unit supplier uh, Ferrari as we go around the outside of Sebastian Vettel. Potentially a slight bit of contact there but uh, we get through on Seb and that gets us up and into uh, top the top 12. Uh, so just two positions away from the points now. Next up is uh, Alexander Albon. Albon is ahead of you. The gap to the car ahead is 3.5 seconds. And that gap to Albon diminishes uh, in less than a lap as we catch up to him going through uh, Village and round the outside of the loop. And Albon is going to just about see us there and leave us the room on the outside. And uh, we find ourselves up and into 11th position. Bottler ahead. Our gap to the car in front is 3.0 seconds. So next up we catch up to uh, Devon Butler and uh, now we're trying to chase him down as we head towards Maggots and Beckett sitting in the slips, into the slipstream of the Williams and uh, we'll just take things nice and easy through Maggots and Beckett so we don't uh, get too close to him and then try and get a good run uh, on the exit with the DRS open and the slipstream it shouldn't be too hard to make the move here on the hangar straight and now we have a look to the inside of Devon Butler there's no way he can defend with the overspeed that we have and we're able to get through and find ourselves up and into the points here at Silverstone but we are not done yet with the overtakes as we catch up to the back of Sergio Perez and uh, we're a bit of a mistake there through uh, the first corner but down the inside and we'll make the move at turn three, uh, sliding our way through there and uh, getting ahead of Sergio. Nice that brings you up a place. And uh, that brings us up and into ninth position. Next up we have Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, the future teammates at Ferrari, as we go a little bit wide there and trying to get a good run uh, uh, along to uh, the first corner. Not going to get quite get close enough to Charles Leclerc here, but I imagine we'll be able to go for the move. Uh, maybe even around the outside of turn two, and we do it. Now can we get Carlos Sainz in the break? No, we, that was way too optimistic. We're not going to get that far. But we do get ahead of Charles Leclerc now. Uh, around the outside of Carlos Sainz. Not quite going to get there, though, as we switch back and try and get to the inside of entry. That door was always going to close, though. So we're just going to have to do it with DRS as Charles Leclerc sits behind us, uh, looking to re-overtake us. He's not going to get close enough, though. And now we can refocus once again on Carlos Sainz. Maybe we'll be able to make a move all the way around the outside of Luffield. And we do just that and get ahead of Carlos Sainz in that way and uh, move ourselves up and into seventh position here. So we're really forging a great comeback 
uh, from where we were before. So we move on now to the end of the race and uh, we couldn't quite catch up to Esteban Ocon who was uh, next uh, up the road but uh, we are going to bring it around the final corner and uh, finish in a uh, very lucky P7. Alright race over, take care of the car on the way in. Here we are then, a fantastic British Grand Prix and what a performance it was from our race winners today. What a race for young Aidan Jackson. If he can keep this up, he's got a long, promising career in front of him. Absolutely. He'd have been gutted about that puncture. Imagine what kind of challenge he'd have been able to make without it. You've got to give it to him, though. He gritted his teeth and pulled it back. Great driving. Now, whisper it quietly, but things seem to be on the up for Hass's Aidan Jackson. What to watch. Despite suffering a puncture mid-race, Jackson manages to overcome the odds, securing a brilliant points finish for Haas at the British Grand Prix. Brian! Well, someone's the hot topic in the press room. What do you mean? Oh, come on. There's no need to be so modest. What are you on about, Brian? Well, after that puncture, everyone thought you'd lost it. But to pull it back, and into the points. It's all anyone's talking about. Well, I'm glad the press are starting to take notice. Oh, get used to it. They put a bunch of interviews in your diary for tomorrow. It's why I was calling. Right. Thanks for letting me know. So don't celebrate too hard tonight, eh? Yeah, all right, Brian. Don't worry. I'm only going to see my mum. Right. Well, each to their own. See you later, Brian. Oh, well. Uh, I think I am uh, going to leave it at that uh, for this one. I know this episode is a little shorter than the last, but uh, yeah, that's all I have time to record for today. So uh, um, other than that, then, uh, I'll just say thank you so much for watching. Uh, as I said in the uh, first episode, I am really, really enjoying uh, this uh, entire uh, career, this entire uh, game mode, uh, the story, and... Uh, I guess we had a relatively quiet one in, t uh, in terms of the actual uh, teammate drama. Uh, we didn't really have any uh, run-ins with Butler or Ackerman uh, this time, so you know, maybe things are uh, settling down a little, and uh, you know we can uh, focus on the job at hand a little more now. But uh, we'll see how uh, things continue to to uh, evolve over the rest of the season. So. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will see you next time uh, when we continue uh, through this story. So, uh, yes, uh, goodbye.